Good afternoon. This is going to be the Pisces reading. Um, <laughs> I know I have really been really very focused on my channel lately. Um, I live in Indiana and it literally has like rained for like a month and a half now. <laughs> it has not stopped. I was joking around that it had rained 40 days and 40 nights and it really has. Um, it's becoming like a joke now. Like everybody's like, you know, coming up with funny memes and stuff about the rain. And, um, but it's like really sad because the farmers can't get the crops out. Um, you know, normally, you know, we have the saying, you know, knee high by July, you know, with the corn, <clears throat> most of the corn crops have not even been planted yet. So it's just very, very sad. Um, uh, but I've been giving the analogy of learning to dance in the rain. You know, after a while, you know, the rain starts to put you in kind of a funk. I feel like I've been in a funk. <laughs> like, I haven't been able to get out street mend. I haven't been able to get, you know, do anything. Thank God I quit my paper route. Um, because, I, I mean, it's really been raining a lot more. But, you know, it's really all about um, <clears throat> learning to dance in the rain and looking for the rainbow. You know, so it's really given all of us here, <laughs> all those Hoosiers, a new perspective you know um, we've had like a new way of life so far <laughs> really having to navigate around the rain but <clears throat> you adjust and you modify and you learn to <clears throat> see things from a different point of view shift your perspective um, and so I really feel like the rain is teaching me personally not to resist the physical circumstances right now um, and to do, like I said, um, to kind of adjust to it and learn to roll with the punches <laughs> and go with the flow, literally. <laughs> like, that is the message, go with the flow. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and get started, but if you have not checked out, I'm doing, like, the four elements, um, runes readings. I may use cards sometimes. I might use runes other times. Um, and even your sign when I go to do, like, my Pisces readings. You know, there might be times that I use runes instead of cards. I'm just really going off what I'm guided to do at this point. Um, because I've been trying to follow um, my inner guidance more and more. So, to start with, we have the Two of Cups. And this is all about um, a partnership. This is a romantic partnership. <clears throat> Um, because to clarify this uh, card, we have friendship. Nurture the bonds of friendship within your relationship and your love life will dramatically improve. The theme seems to be energy right now. And understand everything is energy. We're energy. Um, everything is energy. Everything. So do be very careful of the energetic uh, signals that you are sending out. Make sure you're very clear on your intentions. And how do you do this? Think about the romantic partner that you seek right now. And ask yourself, why do you want to be with them? If your answers have anything to do with... <clears throat> sorry. Um, this is how because of how they make me feel. Um, they complete me. They fill a void. <laughs> anything like that, that is all a codependent energy. <clears throat> that is all coming from a place of lackity and scarce, scarcity, uh, lack and scarcity, sorry, lackity. Um, so if you are doing that, understand it reflects on you. I really feel like the message here is to um, really improve the relationship that you have with yourself first. Um, to make sure that you are fulfilling your own cup. Because that is so important. That way, you know, when somebody else um, enters your life, you're not putting all of those requirements on them. Because that is a very needy, a very heavy energy. And a lot of times, it's repelling. If someone knows that you have those type of requirements, like they have to make you happy. They have to keep your cup filled. Um, they have to fill your void. They have to continue making you happy. You know, what if they're in a funk one day? And what if, you know, they're just not feeling it? What if, you know, 
they kind of withdraw and go into their cave for a few days because they're dealing with some things. So are you going to judge that as bad? Like, oh, they don't care. They don't appreciate me anymore. I can't be happy anymore because <clears throat> for whatever reason they have taken their love away from me. Well, first of all, love is not a verb anyway. It is a state of being. And you, um, in order to align to love, you have to be love. And in order to be love, you have to give that to yourself, first of all. You have to find a way to fill your own needs and to fill your own void. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. My allergies are bad from all this rain. Um, so basically, um, the energy and the message that I'm getting with this card is that in order to be um, in alignment with love, like I said, you have to be love. And this means you have to really be self-focused. Don't be scared to say no. Don't be scared to stay home. Um, simply because putting yourself first is not selfish. I know a lot of times people tell us, you know, you're being self-centered, you're being selfish. And we're told that's a bad thing. We're conditioned to feel like we're supposed to put others first. And that's simply not true because it starts within. Because whatever is inside, you reflect in your outer circumstances. So if you're going to start cleaning house anywhere, start within so that it can reflect outwardly. We have the King of Swords. And basically feelings have been um, really the theme um, over like the past week in the readings that I've done. <clears throat> People not being true to their feelings. Now, let's say somebody hurts you and you act like it didn't bother you. You know what? I don't care. It is what it is. I'm not going to let this shit bother me. I'm going to put on a brave face. I'm going to go out here and face the public because you know what? It matters what people think. <laughs> um, and you act like you don't care. You're sending out that energetic signal into the universe. And the universe is like, well, they don't care anyway. So why should we? This obviously is not something that he or she wants because you're sending out that signal. Now, what if instead you sent out the signal, you know what? <clears throat> yes, I was hurt. And you don't even have to tell anybody this because it's all energy. You send out the, you know, and, and this involves getting in touch with your own feelings and feeling them and being like, okay, um, I am feeling this way. I am feeling hurt. I'm not going to assign blame to anybody else simply because... Um, nobody can make me feel one way or another. <clears throat> and you know what? Now I need a little time to process how I feel. And so I'm going to go ahead and withdraw. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, take a couple of days to kind of process my feelings right now. And you send that message out into the universe. And you know what that means? That means that you are very conscious and very aware of your own needs and you're working on filling your own cup. A lot of times we see that as bad. You know what, man, I had to take a couple days off from work because I was so upset or so distraught about something. And so we judge that as bad. You know, like I shouldn't be this weak. But there is great strength in recognizing your needs and taking time off to recharge and to regroup. So don't judge that. Because to clarify that card, we have true healing occurs when I give myself to feel whatever feelings live below the triggers. And that's all triggers are. Like, let's say something triggers you emotionally. That trigger is like a road sign showing you what you need to work on. So when that comes up, you can say, okay, this happened and basically it triggered me because of my belief system and the limiting um, thoughts that I've been telling myself and the stories that I've been telling myself to be true. And then I believe the stories, I believe the thoughts, and then I started feeling all kinds of emotions as a result. <clears throat> so definitely look at the stories you've been telling yourself and try to identify the core wound. There's always a core wound underneath everything. And this core wound will be possibly something traumatic that happened in your childhood. I know mine was the man who I thought was my father walked out and left when I was eight. 
And so I've always had a very deep-seated um, fear of rejection, which has permeated my entire life. It has been the theme of my life's journey. It has been my greatest teacher. And once you identify that core wound, you can begin to start taking it apart. You might always have that fear. That fear might always be there. But you won't be feeding it. And you'll rise above it. And it will no longer be controlling your life. You will have your power back. So, um, <clears throat> I'm so sorry. I keep coughing so much. I need to get a cough drop. Definitely do recognize what that core wound is. And like I said, it'll be whatever type of patterns you've been stuck in. You know, suppose... You choose un uh, emotionally unavailable people. Um, most of the time we choose people who are mo emotionally unavailable because we have a true fear of intimacy and we don't realize it. You know, and then we find ourselves chasing this person. Okay, we're going to chase them. We know they're emotionally unavailable because then it becomes almost like um, a challenge. It becomes a challenge. And then if other people are watching... We really want to win because we don't want to look like a failure or a loser. <laughs> and so then it becomes, you know, multidimensional now. Now you're like, okay, there's different layers to this now. Because now I've got people watching me. So, you know, I really care about what other, pe other people think. And two, I'm chasing somebody who I know I will never quite have. Because my true fear is of actually really being with somebody in a real intimate relationship. And so I avoid it and put on the facade that I'm this long suffering person that really cannot keep anybody in my life because I'm choosing the wrong people to begin with. <laughs> and it's a cycle. And so once you identify the fact that that is a fear of intimacy, and, you know, I have fear of intimacy, too, which I came to realize that it's all from that core wound, that fear of rejection. So, you really have to dig deep. Um, we have the Two of Staffs, which is the same thing as the Two of Wands. And I feel very strongly this has to do, once again, with how you see things. <clears throat> That's that old cliche, seeing the cup is half full or half empty. And we know people who will say it's half full, and we know people who will say it's half empty. And basically, it's our own conditioning and um, our own fears and our own upbringing that <clears throat> influence us one way or another. I knew I grew up in a very negative home. <clears throat> My mom um, was like, oh, woe is me. <laughs> Life is so hard. And, you know, she would tell me, prepare for the best, or hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. Well, that was wrong on so many levels, because whatever you prepare for is what you're going to manifest. You know, I was trying to talk to somebody on Facebook this morning who, you know, she's been making a lot of posts lately, you know, that victim mentality. Um, it was that scenario that I gave earlier about choosing un emotionally unavailable people, and I said, well, it's a cycle, you need to look at it, and... She was just like, I'm cursed and things are never going to get any better. And so, you know, after I kind of messaged her back and forth three, four times, I decided, well, she's not ready to hear my message right now. So I kind of walked away from it because I'm not going to waste my energy. And the student is ready. You know, the teacher appears when the student is ready. And basically, um, you're going to get tidbits of information because you wouldn't feed a baby adult food. So you're going to get fed whatever spiritual downloads of information you need at the right time. And um, you'll have people come into your life who will teach you different things and different lessons. And sometimes it can be in the way of a, part, a romantic partner or, you know, a co-worker or someone that you just met and a stranger on the bus. And so I feel like that is happening too. So do pay very close attention to that. Because to clarify that card, it says the company you keep. They say you are, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Whose positive energy can you spend more time around today? 
basically I'm getting two messages with this. One, be sure you keep very good boundaries so that you don't let other people's negative energy in. Don't be scared to be like, look, you know, I'm not trying to hear that shit today. You know, because you can't help everybody. You just can't. And there's some people who don't want to be helped. They enjoy being sick. So understand that. So stop wasting your energy. Second of all, make sure that your circumstances and the people that you're around are not bringing you down. You know, just like the rain, I, I said, for example, you know, we've had all this rain and, you know, I'm trying to stay positive in spite of it, you know, in spite of the fact that I can't really get out and handle my sales the way I need to. I need a bright, sunny day to be able to go out and set up my tables and chairs. I have a whole festival coming up, three-day festival, that I'm like, is it going to rain? Um, <clears throat> but just trying to stay positive amidst that, in spite of whatever type of physical circumstances you have or whatever type of people you have around you. I had made a post earlier today on Facebook where I had said, um, <clears throat> if you have a job that you complain about day after day, that's two things. The first thing it is, is your soul is screaming at you that that job is no longer feeding your soul. It's not for you. And your soul knows this because otherwise you would enjoy going to work. And believe it or not, there are people who do jobs that they enjoy. Um, you, they might not be getting rich at it, but they're enjoying it. And, you know, when you enjoy something um, that you're doing, the money will automatically be there. I said the second thing that's going on is when you get up every day and you complain, Oh, I don't want to go to job, work. I hate my job. Something will happen to where that job will no longer work out for you. It will move out of the way because you're sending out that signal into the universe and you don't even intentionally have to do it it is your soul doing it for you and as you align more and more to your soul energy um, you will see things falling off and people coming in and people going and try to stay detached don't get attached to anything or anyone so that you don't have that extreme fear of loss Try to be fluid. And um, we have the king of coins. And basically what I'm getting with him, because he's clarified by stone people, vigilance. The energy that I'm getting here is that being loyal to a job. Um, I feel like this. a lot of people need to hear this message right now, especially if you have a job that's sucking the life out of you. That you are scared to leave because of your finances. These corporations are not loyal to us, period. Um, let you get sick and not be able to work anymore. I don't give a damn if you've worked for the same corporation for, for 20 years. Not, you know, I mean, 95% of the time, they're just going to be like, look, you know, we got to replace you. Um, because, you know, it's all about the dollar for them. And people are replaceable. And so if you think about all the loyalty that you have put into um, the company that you work for. Or even the company that you keep. People who are around you. Push comes to shove. You're not going to receive that in return. And the reason why I say that is because you're not coming from a place of being loyal to yourself first of all. And so other people and things and circumstances are going to reflect that back to you. <clears throat> Just when I had to get to the point where I realized that with my fear of rejection, that I have been rejecting myself. And others are a perfect mirror, so guess what they showed me? They rejected me in return. It's that same thing. So start being loyal to yourself first. Putting yourself first. And if you have to walk away from things, do so. Um, because that's that vigilance I'm getting here where, you know, you just won't give up. I know it's hard for me to quit things too, because we're taught that, you know, not to be a quitter. But once again, be loyal and be true to yourself because you know what? It's all right to quit things that no longer resonate with you. Don't feel guilty about it. 
Um, we have the Seven of Swords, and basically what I'm getting with this is that whole energy of having too many responsibilities, feeling weighed down. And this is that whole energy of being a people pleaser. Put something down. Downsize, simplify. There's nothing wrong with simplifying. You know, people try to get the most wealth and gain the most material goods, you know, to keep up with the Joneses or because people are watching and we want to look like we're being successful by, by society standards. But what is success actually? Losing your soul, working for a job, um, for a corporation that's greedy, that doesn't care about you to begin with, to gain material wealth, or doing something um, that you really truly love, that is really feeding your soul, um, a job that you enjoy going to, where you might not have quite the material goods that you want, but you know what? When you're in that energy of trying to get more and get more and get more, guess what? It's never going to be enough. <laughs> It's never going to be enough. Somebody you know is always going to have the latest gadgets. They're always going to have a newer car. And so, you know, the energy that I'm getting is, you know, putting yourself in debt, um, trying to keep up with others, trying to put on fronts. Um, when nobody is their body, no one is their job, no one is their physical circumstances. We are souls. We are divinities. And that is who you are. Find out what feeds your soul. Because everything else is temporary. It's here today, gone tomorrow. And um, we have the sun. And the sun is all about power. <clears throat> so how do you take back your power? One, stop giving a damn about what other people think about you or how they feel about you. You don't need anybody to validate you whatsoever. Start telling yourself, I'm a god or goddess. Um, I don't need to earn the approval or the validation of anyone. Tell yourself that daily. And then take back your power from the people who have power over you. The people who have power, the power to make you happy. To make you sad. <laughs> you know, because, you know, basically someone comes in, you know, and especially if you haven't talked to them for a while and then you hear from them, you're like so happy. And then you don't hear from them for a while and then you're sad. <laughs> you need to really balance that out. I need you to get to the point where, you know what, you are all right whether or not they're there or not. That is the energy I'm getting from this card. <clears throat> Page of Staffs. Clarified by the Watchtower of the West, Autumn. And so basically the energy that I get with the leaves, because I'm going to go with the clarifier first and try to work backwards. I know the page is a new beginning, <clears throat> and this has to do with action. And so I feel like this is the beginning of a cycle because we're ending this one here. This is the ending of a cycle, that um, people pleasing, um, that putting others first, and really getting to where you can start have, be, having boundaries with others and learn to start saying no to people to put yourself first. This is the put yourself first card. That is the energy that I'm getting from this. And that is all right. Stop thinking that it's not all right to put yourself first because it is. Even if you're a parent, you can't be the best parent that you can be unless you put yourself first. You have to be in a place of being happy and healthy and whole in order to be able to raise other people you're raising human beings and you're conditioning them that's what we do and I'm, I'm not taking away from the fact that I know that we have to discipline our kids and stuff but um, a parent and a child is the most conditional relationship there is because we teach our kids they have to earn things and basically just make sure that they're not having to earn your 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 uh, approval or your um, your your care and your affection just be very careful that that message came through for somebody <clears throat> um, we have birds and we have the park 
so basically what I'm getting is, is that, and I, I know it just sounds real basic. There's not like a real symbolic meaning here. I really believe it just means just this as far as getting out and spending more time out in nature and really connecting, getting away from that concrete jungle, um, getting out and seeing the trees and the birds. And I'm getting that there's some of you that all you see all day long is concrete. You know, from where you work, you maybe you live in a city, it's nothing but traffic and stress. And so the message that I'm getting is to disconnect, you know, take a camping trip, get away for the weekend, just unwind and um, really connect to nature and really see that there's more to life than what you have had going on. Because like I said, I really feel like everything you have going on right now is just sucking the life out of you. And so do connect. I'm getting for some of you music. Um, being outdoors. Go to the park. Take a walk. Go someplace where it's green. Where you can see the color green. That message is coming up. Okay, um, let me go ahead and read this card. It says, Dearest you, sometimes it's wonderful to give, but there are times you might find yourself overgiving. I swear that's what I was saying earlier about being able to say no and have boundaries. And now might be a good time to check in and see where you might be cutting off the flow of abundance. Let others give to you even if you are more comfortable being generous and being the giver, the healer, the rescuer. In the art of living, we sometimes overlook an important skill, receiving gracefully and with gratitude, without diminishing yourself or trying to deny vulnerability or bringing an agenda of equality to it. Receiving is hard for some people, maybe you. You do not need a this for that in your exchange with others. You're doing good in the world. Let the world give back and support you. Then you can give up the old stories that have you convinced that you have to do everything alone with no help. Let your well be filled. We all love you so much. So if you have been in um, that, that disease that I call people pleasing and not able to say no to people, um, do feel like you can have those boundaries and put yourself first. Um, but also the message that's coming through from Spirit is don't be afraid to ask for help. Um... And I do feel like a lot of this has to do with family. Um, possibly you feel like maybe um, you're unappreciated. But sometimes we put ourselves in positions where we have to feel needed because it validates us. That is that codependency of I'm going to make myself valuable and make myself needed. And there's a certain manipulative quality to that. Because then you expect something in return. That's the reason why I said um, with this type of relationship here, this one with that two of cups and that friendship, nurture the bonds um, of friendship. Do check your intentions and make sure that you are not in it to get something in return. Um, the way that they make me feel or filling a void or um, validating me in some kind of way. Because a lot of times, that's what overgiving is for. We overgive with an agenda. And I believe that message came out with this, with that tip for tat, like, or this for that. Um, so do definitely clear that. And don't be afraid to ask for help if you need it. Um, well, Pisces, this is your weekly reading. And do um, check out my, um, my four elements, runes readings, uh, my past life reading, my all signs reading, and my twin flames reading. If you would like to have a personal reading with me, they are $40 right now. And we can either do a video chat and, you know, we can spend the whole time talking if you want. I can pull some cards. It's your half hour. Or I can send you a video in the cards. I'll include uh, my PayPal, my Cash App information in the description of the video. And you also can make an energy donation if you would like. Thank you for watching.